Hear the word of God from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, and reading from verse 5 to 25. The birth of John the Baptist foretold. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as a priest before God. He was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel and I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he couldn't speak to them, and they realised he'd seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but was unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home, and after this his wife Elizabeth became pregnant, and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said, in these days he has shown his favour and taken away my disgrace among the people. Amen. The emblem for this reading uh, for this day is a stump, the stump of a tree. And this is exactly where the Jesse tree concept comes from. Uh, the reading again points us back to the succession uh, that God allows to happen so that his plans work out in human history. So, I don't know, can you see the, the stump there? Just twist it round. And in many churches, children are the ones that make Jesse trees. They get a great fun out of working on them. One of the people who's made a banner for each child and a leader of the workshops in the church has created marvellous symbols for each person for the Bible stories, which the children made and hung on the tree. As you might imagine, the emblems were about an apple for Adam and Eve, a rainbow for Noah, a harp for David, etc. But yesterday, the leader said that she was stumped on what symbol to create for Zechariah, who we heard about in our reading. Seemed pretty obvious to me. A smiley face with a zipper where the mouth goes. But she's right. It is hard to come up with a symbol for this player in the divine production that is taking place in the pages of Scripture. And if Scripture is correct, it is hard to be someone named Zechariah. 
2 Chronicles 24 verses 20 to 23 tell of the priest Zechariah who was stoned to death for his unpopular preaching, a passage that ministers might want to keep hidden from their flocks. 2 Kings chapter 15, 8 to 12 recounts the story of King Zechariah, who ruled for only six months before being assassinated. And then there is the little prophet, br little brother prophet, who always stood in the shadow of Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And in today's reading, all Zechariah did was ask for a sign. What proof is there? of these promises being made to Elizabeth and me, he wanted to know. Maybe Zechariah was struck speechless so he didn't have to answer all the questions people would ask when they discovered that Elizabeth was pregnant. Maybe he was struck speechless because his doubts outweighed his faith. Maybe he was struck speechless so that in the ensuing silence he could hear what it was that God had to say to him. This season is so noisy, so jangling, so discordant. We are so busy chatting on the telephone, talking to sales clerks, trying to run down the best bargains. We are so busy asking for a sign of God's presence in our world that we can't hear the cries of the infants seeking our attention. We have become such a part of all the noise of this time that we can't hear the whispers of the angels. Let's pray. Holy God, for a season, for a day, for an hour, even for a moment, may we become speechless that your word might shape our hearts and souls. Amen.